So uh, Recital was uh, released about a year after Concert, Concert uh, in, in December of 1977 and Recital uh, the uh, second half of uh, 1978. So uh, the, I, I was still using the AKG 414s uh, and um, my reference loudspeakers, um, which had been uh, Dahlquist EQ10s with uh, the subwoofers, um, I had begun modifying the DQ10s in, in certain uh, ways. And um, those modifications uh, would ultimately lead uh, three years down the road to the Wham loudspeaker. Uh, and so um, this uh, recording, though, uh, recital, uh, I have to confess my great fondness for Flintrop organs. And I think part of that is because of um, uh, E-Power Biggs, who recorded on the Columbia label uh, in the 60s and 70s. And he he uh, was a great champion of the Flintrop organ at Harvard's Bush Reisinger Museum. Uh, and I listened to a lot of his recordings. I have quite a few of them in my collection. Uh, also um, influential was a recording that Biggs made of um, the uh, organs uh, built by Arp Schnitger in Western Europe, uh, in Germany and Holland and that area. Uh, during, uh, you know, those, are, those instruments were, were used during Bach's lifetime. Uh, and these tracker action organs are very articulate. Uh, the, uh, the valves are connected uh, directly to the uh, uh, keys on the keyboard through a, a system of wooden tracker rods, which are interconnected uh, or uh, through uh, little uh, leather uh, pivots and hinges and so forth. Uh, they're, they're just a wonderful mechanism. So, uh, and then uh, among the tracker action organs, the flintrops have, um, I think, a, an unusually fine balance to their sound. Some of the tracker action organs are voiced to be uh, overly bright. Uh, the, the flintrops seem to just have a very uh, beautiful balance to them. And, and um, this... Um, uh, Flintrop uh, at uh, St. Mark's Episcopal in uh, Palo Alto uh, would be the first of two Flintrop organs that I would record, the other being in uh, Seattle, Washington, the largest uh, Flintrop organ. Uh, about this recording, um, I had decided by this time to um, go with the so-called hypercardioid pattern of the AKG microphone. That's a pattern which was requested uh, by the BBC and uh, was incorporated in the 414E. The earlier 412 only had three patterns. So this one, uh, you have your cardioid sensitivity to the front, um, but unlike a pure cardioid, which has as little sensitivity to the rear as possible, this allows a certain amount of pickup from the rear so that you have this um, you, you, you have a little bit of added um, uh, room uh, color and warmth uh, to the sound. Uh, so um, I, I describe in the liner notes, uh, you know, the, the distance from the organ that the, the microphones are and so forth. I, I remember uh, uh, Mr. Hubbard, uh, the English horn player, uh, asking me if I wanted the, uh, the damping pads uh, left in the keys on the English horn or removed, and I said, well, which do you prefer playing? And he says, oh, I'd rather have them removed. And, uh, and then he said, the problem is, is that it results in a little bit of noise from the valves. And I said, audiophiles will enjoy that. It makes it sound so much more alive, like a live uh, recital that they're hearing in their own listening rooms. So he was very happy to, to do that, and I'm delighted with it. This uh, work by Cotzier uh, is uh, one of my all-time favorite pieces of music, and it was recorded uh, actually with the Flintrop organ in mind, and I think it was actually inspired by Dirk Flintrop. Um, 
this, uh, I, among the recordings that, that I've made, Recital is one of my very favorites. Uh, because uh, by that time, I had developed my recording technique for pipe organ uh, to a pretty high level. Uh, Ken Kessler, back in uh, 1983, in a British magazine, he listed the 12 best-sounding records of all time. And I was delighted that, uh, that I had recorded two of those 12. This one uh, is... Uh, he, he admitted that he loved the sound of this, but that he preferred the other best uh, recording, which was Ragtime Rasmataz. And he said that, uh, you know, the recital, unfortunately, organ music reminds him of guilt and church and the Inquisition and so forth. Uh, whereas uh, Ragtime Rasmataz reminds him of brothels and uh, beer houses and so forth. So he was much more comfortable with that connotation. It was delightful writing. Um, so this one, this one isn't going to have the big earth-shaking bass, you know, that's going to demonstrate the subwoofers and everything. But uh, even uh, Peter Moncrief in International Audio Review felt that this was one of the best-sounding recordings of all time. <laughs> 